Okay, all right, all right. Como esta? Hey, what's up? All right, I've been waiting for a while to come back to this and get started on the herbs and spices. Whew, and all the health benefits, A to Z. Um, so this is a little, start out with a little intro. And uh, for some, this might be interesting, you know, uh, but it is good for, for health, detox, recovery, just overall healthy lifestyle, uh, for cooking especially, but culinary, medicinal, and just going through all the herbs and spices to use, cuisine, cocktail, and um, all right, so yeah, I'm going to get started and I'll be reading from this book I highly recommend. It's the, uh, you can get on Amazon for ebook, but it's Urban Spice Companion, Complete Guide to Over 100 Herbs and Spices by Lindsay Herman. So I highly recommend that book. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over an introduction, kind of skip through some of the stuff on, you know, growing herbs and spices at home, drying, freezing, and storing herbs and spices. But um, the, the, kind of the format to go over will be first covering, well actually I'm going to cover A to Z, about 100 herbs that I've got. I've imported many of them, herbs and spices I should say. I was going to divide and separate and go over first herbs and then spices. But I'm going to keep it organized from A to Z. And then with this book, though, I do like the format of this book. It covers first herbs. And then it, it, in the herbs, it covers, it goes A to Z, but it covers common, common herbs and then exotic herbs. And then it covers and separates spices. Same thing, common spices as opposed to, uh, and then exotic spices. So I'm, I'm here in the Philippines. I've tried to get what's available as far as ordering, import, Lots from China, especially, but a lot of herbs. And, but th these are common, mo most, well, there are some unique herbs here to the Philippines that I've gotten here locally as well. But um, a lot of the others available, I've imported just, you know, wherever I can get here in Asia, Southeast Asia, China. And so uh, I've tried to collect and get everything I can to experiment with. And, um, before I'll be, I'll be doing some reviews on cocktails, cuisine, culture. Um, did some wine, wine blends, you know, uh, tea blends, uh, some smoke blends with my little water pipe bong. But um, yeah, it's, I don't smoke. But this is a healthy, healthier alternative to smoking tobacco, nicotine addiction, things like that. So yeah, I recommend using herbs for that um, but yeah like I said whether it's culinary you're using it for cooking or uh, medicinal herbs it's been around ancient medicine it's still going strong today but I think it's uh, yeah I want to get into that but in, you know I want to go over an introduction on uh, traditional Chinese medicine as well and kind of the feng shui of herbs um, but I'll cover that and the five elements that correspond with, with each herb and spice and flavors. Uh, cover that on another video. So right now I'm kind of going, going through an introduction. I'll be reading a lot from this book and I'll be covering A to Z, going over the herbs. In later videos I will be going over recipes, dishes, international dishes available from each continent, um, you know, cuisine, as well as cocktails and also uh, making some blends, some herb and spice blends that are, uh, you know, unique around the world. To make it more simple, just mix the blends and then add it to your dish. Uh, so that's, that's the plan. So I'm gonna kinda go over my setup here before I start reading. Um, I already had my caffeine coffee, so. Get some, 
red wine going. All right, maybe some herbal tea if I take a break and come back. So, yeah, let's begin. Boom. Well, yeah, all right. I had to do that shit, I don't know why. Clears, clears my mind so I can focus. So, again, I've got my, you know, little tea, tea set up here. Um, I'm not going to sh show, but I got my bar cocktails off the left. But right here is my, my um, herbs and spice collection. Over here I got a little, little grinder and scale, motor and pestle. Come back to that little spice rack here. Tea set up. And uh, all right, before I go through the, each herb A to Z and get, get those out in the drawers, well, sure you can't really see, but I've got these little bottles here. These little glass jars, bottles here. I'm gonna make spice blends, herb blends and spice blends. I've got, geez, I don't know. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 24. So I've got 24 different spice blends. I'm gonna be storing herbs and spices in these, in these jars. And I've got about 10, 10 of these containers sealed airtight to preserve, keep fresh the herbs and spices and the blends that I make, especially for teas. So they work out really good. And, and then plastic, a good quality plastic is good. Here in the Philippines, it's humid. So the glass, you know, it sweats and gets, gets wet easy using glass. So these work out good. I've got extra, you know, bags that I've, when I ordered all my supplies, I've got extra bags of herbs and spices. If they didn't, you know, fit in the bottles, I've just stored them, kept them in the original bag and I've got them in these baskets, baskets organized in here in this cabinet. Some more stuff down there. And, um, okay. So that's it. All right, let's get started. So I don't know how much I cover. Um, like I said, all, all of these are not available in this book, at least half of them. I'm sure over 50. I've got about, I think, 120, 120 herbs. And yep, I'm not in frame. Is that it? Again, frame. Yeah, I'm not going to be in frame unless I sit down, but you can hear me talk. All right, so let's see what we can cover probably within an hour. Hopefully, the battery doesn't die. But um, yeah, I'm just going to go through A to Z. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know how long is that going to take, but you know these. Okay, so I keep the bottles here stocked, and um, here in my spice rack, I've also kind of duplicated a lot of herbs and spices. I'll just go through real quick. Try to make a complete setup here for common herbs that I use in the kitchen for cooking. Okay, we got allspice, basil leaves, bay leaves, chili powder, cayenne pepper, celery, cinnamon, cloves, cumin seed, dill, garlic powder, ginger, and why are some out of order? I've had these in alphabetical order. Somebody messed them up. Coriander. So ginger, lemongrass, mustard seed, marjoram, mint, nutmeg, onion, 
oregano, Spanish paprika, parsley, black pepper, rosemary, sage, star anise, tarragon, thyme, turmeric, and then these are blends, uh, barbecue spice, Italian seasoning, pizza seasoning, curry powder, and a masala. So I don't know, what's that? 6, 9, 10, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 20, 20, 34, 34, I got 34 spices there. And kind of keep that as my main supply stocked up for cooking. Um, anyways, yeah, you'll see the picture, the photo of each plant. But um, I don't know what's the point of getting all these out if I'm going to read. Well, okay, I'll, I'll just go over each one what I have. So hopefully we'll see how long it takes to get through the 10. So sorry, it might be, you know, for those who are interested, it might be interesting, you know, exciting, but it might be a little boring for those who aren't. But I'm doing this to try to, you know, change my, you know, get more exercise, my diet, but health, health, healthy lifestyle. And um, I always kind of have my coffee, my tea, herbal tea wine um but uh, yeah if i stop drinking and and get more healthy which is a, is what i need to do and detox my organs my body uh, whole system so you know i have to cut out usually i drink my rum coke you know my wine and my um my mule it's a vodka ginger little cocktail it's not really a beer but ginger beer my mule so i don't know eventually try to cut out the drinking, get more healthy. Um, and uh, all right, let's begin. So go over the introduction and then I'll start covering the herbs, first common herbs and then um, exotic herbs and kind of correspond with what I got here. So I'll mention, oh well, yeah, all right, let's get started. Um, Let's get that introduction, Herbs and Spices 101. How to use this book. Yeah, I'll, I'll read the introduction. Okay, just a couple decades ago, the world of herbs and spices was only as varied as the typical supermarket shelf. How times and meals have changed. Thanks to a booming agricultural, ag agricultural, agriculture industry and wide-reaching international trade it's now possible for tasty and exciting flavors from the other side of the globe to wind up in your dinner plate or on okay special specialty food stores and well-stocked supermarkets today offer herbs and spices from latin america europe the middle east and asia while farmers markets still sell top-notch produce sourced from around the world but grown on local farms. If your town doesn't have a fancy specialty store or far farmer's market, don't worry. Online garden centers, nurseries, and spice merchants have made it easier than ever to purchase exotic herbs and seeds grown anywhere from Argentina to Zanzibar. Whether you're a newbie in the kitchen or an herb growing pro, the sheer variety of flavors available can be exciting and a bit overwhelming. For culinary beginners, Western classics are a great place to start. Basil, dill, garlic, oregano, parsley, rosemary, sage, and thyme. They're easy to find and their complementary ingredients will be too. They're also some of the easiest herbs to grow at home. Once you've got, gotten the swing of these staples, feel free to experiment with your cooking and add, a new add new flavors to the mix. But before you run out and buy out all these seasonings in your grocery store, read through these introductory chapters for a primer on herbs and spices. Uh, herbs and Spices 101. Although it's easy to use the words herb and spice entertain, in, interchangeably, there actually, there's actually a major difference between the two. Herbs are generally, generally the leafy green foliage and tender stem of a plant used for the f use either fresh or dried in cooking. Most herbs grow wild in temperate climates where their growing cycles sync with the changing seasons. Spices, on the other hand, are almost exclusively native to the tropics and subtropics. And they come from, a vari uh, from various other plant parts, including the bark, berries, fruits, seeds, roots, and rhizomes. rhizomes. 
For example, allspice and peppercorns are technically berries, while cloves and, and capers are flower buds. Nutmeg is a seed, ginger is a rhizome, and cinnamon is made from tree bark. Allspices are typically dried after they're harvested, and some require further processing in order to develop their signature flavors. There are also several plants that offer up both herb and spice, coriander, also cilantro, dill, fennel, all produce edible leaves as well as seeds. One interesting similarity between herbs and spices is their role in early medicine. Virtually all have been used as curatives uh, at some point in history. In fact, before, herbs and spices were widely used in the kitchen. They were prized for their medicinal and mystical powers in ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, India, and China. Dating back to 1500 BC, the oldest known medicinal text, the Ebers Papyrus, contains more than 800 ancient Egyptian remedies featuring plants such as chamomile, cinnamon, coriander, cardamom, fennel, garlic, mint, sesame, sage, and thyme. Egyptians also used herbs for embalming, cosmetics, and perfumes. Herbs and spices also held symbolic meaning in ancient cultures, and some have been carried through the modern day to the modern day. In Greece and Rome, for example, poets, athletes, and war heroes wore wreath crowns of bay or laurel leaves, a symbol of honor. Today, poet laurelettes are wordsmiths of the highest order, and a bachelorette degree is offered to university students upon graduation. While some herbs and spices are still used for their medicinal properties, this book covers only those with value in the kitchen. Luckily, most tasty seasonings grown from the earth also have great health benefits. They are natural dige digestive aids, and many offer antibacterial, antioxidant, and anti-inflammatory properties. They're also low in calories and high in vitamins and minerals, making these flavor boosters an all-around healthy addition to any meal. All right, how to use this book. Eh, all right, I'll go ahead and finish. Okay, Urban, Urban Spice Companion is divided into Herb Guide and a Spice Guide, together containing 100 profiles of the world's most commonly used seasonings. Each guide is organized by availability in the marketplace. First up are the seasonings that are widely sold at well-stocked supermarkets, specialty markets like Whole Foods and Fairway, and local farmers markets. The more exotic seasonings come next. These will take up or take a little exploring to get your hands on, but many can be found in ethnic markets or via online herb and spice merchants. For those interested in starting an herb garden at home, each profile features growing instructions that detail the plant's basic needs, including light, water, and soil requirements. See the following chapter, Growing Herbs and Spices at Home, for more information to learn how to store your seasoning for opt optimal freshness, flip to drying, freezing, and storing herbs and spices on page 17. And finally, when you're ready to savor their flavors, each profile offers preparation tips and cooking suggestions. Okay, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, yeah, I had some fresh live plants here, herbs, um, my herb garden. Um, I don't know why, I tried to outdoor, indoor, just didn't do too well, so they died. I miss that, you know, especially basil, I like, you know, there's many that are important to keep fresh. Um, but yeah, so, and Oh, right now, man, it's strong. The aroma, I've got some aromatherapy going on. I, I got this lamp. It's actually an oil lamp. And I'm using this, um, I'm saying the Latin name, sage. This pure sage oil. Strong, powerful, very good cleansing for the air. And um, kind of overdid it, but I got my incense too. But yeah, I recommend this oil. It's good. And um, all right, yeah, so let's continue. Growing herbs and spices at home. Okay, I'm gonna kind of skip through this section, but the following are easy to find at local nurseries and garden centers in the US. Basil, chive, cilantro, dill, fennel, mint, oregano, marjoram, parsley, rosemary, sage, tarragon, and thyme. Gardening 101, common plants by life cycle. 
growing essentials, so climate considerations. Yeah, it's humid here, so the climate, a lot of them were kind of hard to grow. Um, containers, size, material, drainage, light, full sun, partial shade, full shade, soil, starting from seed. We're gonna kind of skip these sections. Starting from cuttings and root divisions. Yeah, I didn't even start from seeds. I started from, from cuttings or, or small baby plants. And they started growing after a while and then they eventually just died out. Didn't even really get to use them in my cooking. All right, um, starting from cuttings and root divisions, watering, harvesting herbs, harvesting spices, drying, freezing and storing herbs and spices, fresh versus dried herbs, when to go fresh, storing fresh herbs, freezing fresh herbs, when to go dried, drying fresh herbs, air dry, oven or microwave, All right, finally, back. okay, so here we start with the, with the herb guide. Okay, we'll cover first common and then exotic, robust to tender. This section covers all the herbs that you'll ever need. All right, all right cooking with herbs. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll read that. Cooking with, with herbs. Culinary herbs can be divided into two general categories that will help you determine how to cook them. Robust herbs and tender herbs. Herb, herbs with robust, deep flavors such as thyme, rosemary, curry leaves, garlic, and sage will hold up well to heat. These herbs can cook for long periods of time and are often added at the beginning of a recipe. So the rich flavors have time to simmer. I was worried about that. Those birds, man. Those little parrots love birds. They're loud. Even I got them outside. And of course the roosters, dogs. Welcome to the Philippines. Whew, all right. Where was I? Okay, these herbs can cook for long periods of time and are often added at the beginning of a recipe. So the rich flavors have time to simmer and emanate thoroughly into a dish while cooking. Robust herbs are great for stews, soups, roasts, and dishes that are braised or grilled. Of course, if a, of course, if a slow cooked dish needs more flavor after cooking, you can add chopped herbs to taste before serving. But uh, use caution, a little goes a long way. At the, other end of the spectrum, at the other end of the spectrum are tender herbs, such as cilantro, basil, dill, parsley, and chives. The leaves and stems of tender herbs should be added at the end of the cooking or just before serving as they can with or they can't 
withstand much heat and will lose their flavor if cooked for too long. These herbs are delicious additions for fresh salads, soups, eggs, fish, vegetable dishes, and potatoes. All right, so we got robust herbs like bay leaf, cilantro, curry leaf, lavender, lemongrass, myrtle, oregano, rosemary, sage, thyme, winter, savory. And then we have versus tender herbs such as basil, catnip, chervil, chives, cilantro, dill, fennel, fenugreek, garlic, horseradish, marjoram, mint, parsley, scallions, summer savory, summer savory, um, tarragon, watercress. Preparing fresh herbs. I'm gonna skip that, but removing leaves from stems large leaf herbs, herbs with woody stems, herbs with delicate stems, herbs with, with uh, thick bottom stems, chopping and crushing, chop coarsely, chop finely, chiffonade, crush herbs. It shows uh, herb butter, things to make herb butter. These herbs are good, basil, chives, dill, garlic, lemon, verba verbena, Oregano, parsley, rosemary, sage, tarragon, thyme. Flavor cheat sheet. Looking for a particular flavor? Use this list to find an herb that fits the bill. So it just goes over anise, and then it gives uh, other, other herbs as alternatives. Uh, but anise, bitter, tart of citrus, fresh, minty, onion, pungent, earthy, or spicy, sweet. Actually, right, so let me go over that. Yeah, so this, this, these flavors, anise, for an, an anise flavor covers the following herbs. Chervil, dill, fennel, tarragon, anise, hyssop. Bitter covers these herbs. Chicory, fenugreek, hyssop, lovage, myrtle. And then tart or citrus covers these herbs. Bergamot, hatu, hatinia, hatinia, Cordata, hmm, I'm not even sure what that. Lemon balm, lemon ver verbena, lemongrass, sorrel. Then fresh covers these herbs. Borage, parsley, perilla, salad, burnet. Minty covers these herbs. Catnip, mint. Nipatella or lesser cat, calamint. Onion covers these herbs. Chives, garlic, scallions. Pungent, earthy, or spicy covers these herbs. Arigula, cilantro, curry leaf. Episodi, horseradish, marjoram, oregano, ra ram, rosemary, sage, savory, thyme, wasabi, watercress. And then sweet covers these herbs. Angelica, basil, bay leaf, chamomile, elderflower, lavender, marigold, myrtle, pandan, rose, scented geranium, sweet, sicily, and woodruff. All right, yeah, hopefully, I, I forget, I'm thinking the mic's over there. I just got this wireless mic, so hopefully that's working better to cut out the noise anyways. Um, all right, so common kitchen herbs. These herbs, again, are available or easy to find at the grocery store, farmer's market, or made it, or already may have them in your kitchen. So, all right. The first one, number one, arigula. And again, you'll see the following pitch photo and um, <clears throat> yeah it's better as a fresh herb so I don't have <coughs> I don't have that here to store most of these again are in powder form so um, hmm yeah I should read regula Also called, okay, Arigula, I'm not gonna read the Latin name, but the flavors, the flavor profile, peppery, nutty, increasingly bitter with age, with mustard. Also called Rocket, Roget, Rucola, and Italian Cress. This tangy herb has been a staple in the Mediterranean diet since ancient Romans, who also considered it an aphrodisiac due to its strong peppery flavor, Arigula, was mostly ignored in the United States until the 1990s, but it's now certifiable. It 
it food, such as an herb, a salad green, a vegetable in its own right. Arugula's robust flavor adds oomph to mixed salad or green salads, spicing up mild greens like romaine, spinach, and butter lettuce. When cooked, arugula loses some of its pungent flavor and tastes more like a mild green. Only at the end of the cooking, or add only at the end of cooking for optimal flavor. The health benefits. Arugula is an ultra-nutritious ultra cruciferous vegetable, a relative of cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, horseradish, and mustard greens packed with vitamin A, C, E, and K, as well as minerals like calcium, iron, and potassium. It's also thought to play a role in cancer prevention. All right, then it goes over this about in the garden, which I'm gonna skip. It goes over size, container, light, soil, plant, water, harvest, care. Covers uh, substitutions. Um, I'll read substitute. Baby spinach, or a pinch of pepper, dandelion greens, endive, es escarole, radicchio, and watercress. Keep it fresh. Pairings. All right, pairings. Fruits and vegetables it goes good with are um, avocado, beets, berries, citrus, corn, lettuces, mushrooms, onions, oranges, pears, potatoes, and tomatoes. Proteins like beef, chicken, cheese, eggs, fish, and seafood, nuts, prosciutto, probably cheese, veal. And then seasonings, it pairs well with these seasonings or these other herbs. Balsamic, bal balsamic vinegar, chervil, garlic, lemon juice, olive oil, parsley, pepper, red pepper flakes. And then in the kitchen, well, I'm just gonna cover the dishes. It, go, it pairs well with these dishes for salads, sandwiches, soups, pastas, pizzas, and sauces. Prep, serve, and that's it. All right, so I give you an idea first, Arigula. That gives you kind of an idea. I don't know if that takes about a few minutes each one. We've got 100 to go. We'll see how much we can cover within an hour. Okay. And then Next one is basil. Again, good to keep fresh. And basil. Yeah, I do have basil. I don't know what... Huh. I'll highlight what I have here. So basil and powder, but that's good to have fresh. Same with the regular. All right. Um, <clears throat> basil. The flavors are sweet, spicy, peppery, with hints of clove, anise, and mint. An ever popular summertime herb, basil originated in India, but it's but is now grown in warm climates throughout Europe, Asia, and Americas. There are a dozen of varieties to try and countless ways to prepare them in cuisine from across the globe. Sweet basil is most common in Western cuisines, especially in Mediterranean food and other popular, ba and other popular basils in the Western cooking include purple basil, purple ruffles, cinnamon, lettuce, and African blue. Basil is a tender herb, so its flavor won't withstand high, ta high heats for long cook times. If adding to a cook dish, if adding to a cooked dish, do so at the very end of the cooking just before serving. The health benefits. Fresh basil is a nutritional dynamo it's with anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and antioxidant powers that boost the immune system, improve the health of your heart and arteries, and soothe the stomach upset. Uh, the tasty herb has also been shown to reduce stress and symptoms of anxiety disorders. Basil varieties are African blue, bush basil, cinnamon basil, lemon basil, lettuce basil, licorice basil, and purple ruffles basil. Again, in the garden. Substitutions. Arugula, baby spinach, cilantro, oregano, thyme. Keep it fresh. Pairings, pairings with vegetables, it goes good with artichokes, eggplants, mushrooms, olives, potatoes, tomatoes, zucchini. For proteins, it goes good with beans, beef, cheeses, chicken, eggs, fish, and seafood, and pork. With other seasonings or herbs, it goes good with balsamic vinegar, capers, chives, cilantro, garlic, mint, oregano, parsley, rosemary, thyme, and savory. In the kitchen, as far as dishes, it pairs well with salads, sauces, dressings, marinades, soups, 
pastas and pizzas. All right. Actually, I don't even know if that's a couple minutes or a minute. All right, Thai basil. I already covered basil, but it does mention Thai basil. Okay, um, skip that. Uh -huh. All right, holy basil. All right, bay leaf. All right, bay leaf. Yeah, do you got bay leaf? Bay leaf's here. All right, the flavor profile is uh, subtly herbal and woody, intended as a background or base seasoning. Bay leaves are an integral aromatic ingredient in many cuisines, including French, Indian, and Mediterranean. They're used in classic French, but bechamel, bechamel sauce, and the bouquet garni, garni herb mixture. Perfect for recipes that undergo long cook times. They release their flavors gradually while cooking creating a deep background flavor that imbues an entire dish. Bay leaves are always removed before serving as they are hard and sharp even after cooking. Grown on bay laurel trees, this is one of those rare herbs that's best consumed in dry form. In fact, finding fresh bay leaves at your local market might be a challenge and if you do find them, they will probably be the variety grown in California from a different tree and bearing a very different minty flavor. Health benefits. Bay leaves contain eugenol, an antiseptic and anti-inflammatory compound that's used as a mild anesthetic at the dentist's office. The herb is also known to encourage healthy digestion and can prevent and help relieve gas, cramps, and general stomach upset. It's a natural diuretic stimulating urination along with the body's detox processes and it's believed to help regulate blood sugar. All right, in the garden, substitutions. One dry bay leaf equals about four teaspoon dry thyme. Indian bay or sweet cinnamon, clove flavor. Okay, juniper berries for meat dishes. Keep it fresh. Pairings with, uh, for fruits and vegetables it goes it goes good with cabbage, carrots, celery, citrus, mushrooms, onions, peas, pickles, potatoes, tomatoes, and tomato sauces. For proteins, it goes well with beans, beef, chicken, fish, game, lamb, lentils, pork. Seasonings, other herbs, it goes well with allspice, basil, cayenne, chili powder, cloves, fennel, garlic, lemon juice, Marjoram, oregano, paprika, parsley, pepper, red pepper flakes, rosemary, sage, savory, and thyme. In the kitchen for dishes, it pairs well with soups, stocks, sauces, stews, marinades, roasts, braises, and rice. Yeah, then you got Indian bay leaf. Catnip. All right, yeah, did get catnip. So I don't know what's missing. Okay, I'm gonna name, I'm gonna get out each 10 as we go, but it didn't cover, so, did it cover? Oh, yeah, well, oh, that's gonna be hard because, yeah, these are mixed A to Z, herbs and spices, and this book separates the spices. So I don't know if I'm gonna, oh man, how am I gonna do this? Because I'm sure it covers all spice, that's a spice, olive vera, Ampalaya or bitter gourd. Some of these are unique, like I said, to the Philippines, and this book doesn't cover them. Anise, anato, avocado, banaba, barley, basil, basil, bay leaves. I don't know if I'm gonna, yeah, that's gonna be hard to get, get them back out and put them back again. So I don't know, I'll just keep going through the book and uh, and I'll probably have to do a separate video. Oh man. Yeah, I'll finish this, get an hour, I'll come back, I'm gonna do an inventory. So after I finish this, yeah, I'm gonna cut the video, I'll have to come back, do an inventory A to Z of what I have. 
and then later on when I use them I'll use them for different uh, blends and that will be a separate video so I'm going to finish this and then come back to that and um, yeah I don't know why I do this now mm-hmm -hmm. didn't work how I thought it would be Made some more time and battery it's all good I guess I'll learn oh. but yeah everything from A to Z which basically is all spice from allspice to wasabi. <laughs> um, all right, I might have to edit. I better grab some wine, come back. But yeah, on this one, I gotta keep sober, as you see. Sound a lot different when I'm sober than when I'm drunk, probably. So, gotta sober my mind, pursue more intellectual things, as opposed to intoxicating. <laughs> things but um it's all good all good in moderation so all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if I had somebody to help it would have been nice what a waste of time and battery and the edit so I thought you'd be here I thought you'd pay attention listen and learn you should be listening to this whole book I'm reading you should be listening to it Everything. You have to watch the video and learn, listen again. All right, what am I forgetting? You know, I need a camera person. Yeah. I don't know, the battery. Jeez. It's going good. You check the battery's halfway. <coughs> it's been 40 minutes. <coughs> See how many of these we can do. That I had to go over the intro. All right, break time over. I'm back. So next one. Okay, next herb, catnip. Flavors, minty and bitter. Although it, does, it doesn't have the same effect on humans as it does on cats, catnip is indeed edible and easy to incorporate into your herbal repertoire. A member of the mint family, catnip bears resemblance of that herb physically, aromatically, and in flavor. However, some find the fragrance and taste unpleasantly bitter, though probably not your cat. Often used in relaxing, stomach-soothing teas, fresh catnip is can also be sprinkled into a variety of dishes for added minty seasoning. If your yard hosts lots of bugs, take note, the substance that triggers a euphoric reaction in cats called nepitalactone nepitalactone is also an effective mosquito, termite, and cockroach repellent. That's good to know. So the catnip so the catnip plant can serve triple duty as a culinary herb, cat toy, and insect repellent. Health benefits. While catnip might drive your cat crazy, the herb actually has the opposite effect on humans. It's been known for centuries as a calming stress reliever for the body and mind. Catnip can help relieve stomach upset, including irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, indigestion, gas, menstrual cramps, and nausea. It is used to treat anxiety, headaches, and migraines, and insomnia, as well as colds, coughs, upper respiratory infections, fever, and the flu. Thought to possess anti-inflammatory properties, catnip has also been used to relieve discomfort from arthritis, hemorrhoids, and hives. Ah, cool. In the garden. All right, substitutions, mint, lesser calamint. Keep it fresh. Pairings. For fruits and vegetables, it goes well with carrots, cucumbers, eggplant, lemon, lettuce, lime, mushrooms, onions, oranges, potatoes, and tomatoes. For proteins, it goes good with beans, cheese, chicken, duck, eggs, fish, seafood, lamb, lentils, and pork. For other seasonings or herbs, 
Go, it goes well with basil, bay leaves, chili peppers, cilantro, garlic, honey, lemon juice, and zest, oregano, parsley, pepper, sage, and thyme. In the kitchen, it, go, it, go, it pairs well with these dishes. Teas, salads, sauces, soups, stews, and marinades. Bam. Chervil. All right, I don't think I got, I don't think I got chervil. Again, these are better fresh, fresh herbs. But chervil, the flavor. Hmm. Sweet and subtle anise with parsley. Chervil plants have lacy leaves that look much like parsley, only smaller with the intricately fringed edges. They're a relative of parsley, dill, and fennel, all of which are members of the carrot family. So you'll likely find it stocked near those similar herbs. A signature herb of French cooking, chervil is essential to the traditional fine herb, herb blend and common ingredient in creamy baronese, baronese sauce. It's a tender, subtle herb that's best served fresh or added at the, at the end of cooking to keep the flavors in, intact. For this reason, chervil is ideal for salads, dressings, sauces, and eggs were sprinkled over soups and cooked dishes just before serving. The herbs' pretty leaves also make it a wonderful garnish. Health benefits. Chervil is believed to soothe stomach upset, lower blood pressure, and, ass and, and aid circulation. It's also been used to relieve inflammation, including conditions such as gout, as well as skin inflammation like eczema, acne, and tropical allergic reactions. In the garden. Substitutions, dill, fennel leaves, parsley, sweet sicily, tarragon, keep it fresh. Pairings, for vegetables, it goes well with arugula, asparagus, beets, broccoli, carrots, celery, endive, lettuce, green beans, kale, mushrooms, onions, peas, potatoes, shallots, spinach, tomatoes, watercress, zucchini. For proteins, it goes well with beans, cheese, chicken, cream, eggs, fish, and seafood, and turkey. For seasonings and other herbs, it goes well with balsamic vinegar, basil, capers, chicory, chive, dill, fennel, garlic, hyssop, lemon juice, mint, mustard greens, and seeds, parsley, rosemary, tarragon, and thyme. In the kitchen, it pairs well with these dishes, salads, dressings, marinades, sauces, and soups. All right, next, chives. Again, don't have it, it's good for fresh. Chives. The flavors, is a mild onion, fresh, subtly spicy, milder than scallions. A member of the onion family and a relative of garlic, chives are used in many cuisines across the globe and enjoyed for their fresh, zesty crunch. They grow long, hollow, hollow green reeds from small bulb roots and sprout bright pink purple flowers in summertime that are also edible and onion flavored. Garlic chives are grown throughout Asia and have been used in Chinese cooking for, for close to 5,000 years. True to their name, they have a strong garlic flavor that's that fl more flavor than standard, stronger garlic flavor than standard chives. A fundamental ingredient in the French herb blend, Finney's herbs, herb, is, uh, chives are always used fresh or add at the very end of cooking to retain optimal flavor. Health benefits, like onions and garlic, chives contain allicin, a compound believed to help lower cholesterol and blood sugar. They also offer several compounds with antioxidant powers, including vitamin K, carotenes, quercetin, known to help stave off symptoms of aging and protect from digestive conditions like heart, and, and like heart disease and cancer. Or I'm sorry, degenerative conditions like heart disease and cancer. In the garden, Substitutions, leeks, scallions, or green onions, and onions. Keep it fresh. Pairings. For vegetables, they could go well with avocado, carrots, celery, cucumbers, lettuce, mushrooms, onions, parsnips, potatoes, shallots, tomatoes, turnips, and zucchini. For proteins, they go well with bacon, cheddar cheese, cream cheese, eggs, fish, and seafood, especially smoked salmon and goat cheese. 
For other seasonings and herbs, they pair well with balsam and vinegar, basil, chervil, cilantro, dill, fennel, garlic, lemon juice, mustard, paprika, parsley, red pepper flakes, sweet sicily, tarragon, and thyme. And in the kitchen, they pair well with these dishes, salads, soups, sauces, dips, dressings, and marinades. All right, next up is cilantro. Again, another good fresh live herb, so I don't really have that to st store. Um, it's cilantro, the flavor profile, pungent and complex with spicy pepper, mint, and lemon. You'd be hard pressed to find an herb more widely used than cilantro. You'd also be hard pressed to find an herb that inspires so much controversy. Some people aggressively hate the flavor, finding it repulsive and, and claiming that it tastes like soap. But those who love cilantro really love it and they toss it freely into just about anything. Mm. Good. All right, used in many salsas, chutneys, relishes, and spice pastes in cuisines around the world. It's an integral seasoning in Mexican guacamole and the Yemeni hot sauces, zug, and hilbay. See the recipes. Cilantro won't withstand much heat, so it's, it's usually added at the very end of cooking or simply served fresh. Its seed coriander is also a principal spice in the Europe in Europe, Western Asia, India, Central America, and in the United States. The health benefits. Cilantro is a fantastic herb for your health. It's packed with fiber, iron, magnesium, as well as acids that promote healthy cholesterol while reducing bad cholesterol. It offers antibacterial, antibacterial antiseptic, and antifungal benefits. Two, it also helps fight inflammation caused by skin disor disorders like eczema, Cilantro also supports healthy digestion and can help prevent and relieve diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. In the garden, substitutions, basil, cilantro, and parsley. Keep it fresh. Pairings, uh, for fruits and vegetables, it goes well with avocados, carrots, corn, jacama, lettuce, mango, onions, potatoes, tomatoes, and tomatillos. For proteins, it goes well with beans, beef, cheese, chicken, eggs, fish, and seafood, lamb, lentils, and pork. For seasonings and other herbs, it goes well with basil, cayenne, chili peppers, chipotle peppers, chives, coriander seeds, cumin, curry powder, fennel, fish sauce, galangal, garlic, ginger, jalapeno, lemongrass, lemon juice and zest, lime juice and zest, macro, lime, marjoram, mint, oregano, paprika, parsley, red pepper flakes, saffron, scallions, soy sauce, and turmeric. And in the kitchen, it goes well with these dishes, or pairs with these dishes, salads, soups, dips, pastes, and stir fries. All right, next one, dill. Again, it's good fresh. Yeah, I do have it here stored. But dill, the flavor profile is mild anise, parsley with lemon. Dill plants grow feathery, dainty leaves, and if allowed to fully mature, clusters of yellow flowers sprout from the top, replicating the look and growth habit of their cousin parsley and caraway. If you eat pickles, you're familiar with the distinct flavor of dill. It's, signature er it's a signature herb in many European and Asian cuisines, used for its fresh tasting leaves and potent seeds, which taste much like caraway and anise. The leaves are milder in flavor, subtly reminiscent of anise and parsley. Because they're tender, they aren't ideal for dishes with long cooking times unless they're added at the very end. Health Benefits This herb boasts antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-spasmodic, and antiviral powers that make it a fantastic addition to a regular diet. Among its many benefits, dill aids digestion, helps clear up cough and congestion, and has been used to sanitize and disinfect the mouth and injuries to the skin. For example, Hippocrates allegedly tended to, tended to Greek soldiers burn wounds with dill. In the garden, 
And uh, substitutions, tarragon, fennel leaves. Keep it fresh. Pairings, vegetables. For vegetables, it goes well with asparagus, beets, carrots, celery, cucumbers, onions, potatoes, spinach, tomatoes, zucchini. For proteins, it goes well with cheese, chicken, eggs, beans, fish, seafood, and lamb. For seasonings and other herbs, herbs and spices, it goes well with balsamic vinegar, basil, capers, garlic, horseradish, lemon juice, mustard, paprika, parsley, and scallions. In the kitchen, it pairs well with these, di these dishes, salads, sauces, dips, dressings, marinades, soups, breads, and rice. All right, fennel. Next one is fennel. Again, another one that's good live. But fennel seed, got, got that here too. Um, all right, the flavor profile. Sweet, mild, lightly spicy, anise. Fennel is used in the kitchen for its stems its elegant feathery leaves and its anise flavored dried seeds which are actually fruits native to mediterranean it's a beloved staple in italian cooking note that there are two main varieties of fennel herb fennel and florence fennel which has a large firm bulb and is widely consumed as a vegetable for its crunchy bulb rather than it rather than as an herb fennel's delicate feathered feathered leaves are more than just a pretty garnish while they look like dill but they have a much softer, sweeter anise flavor. Healthy benefits. Known throughout history as an effective digestive aid, fennel can be eaten, prepared as a tea, and chewed in, in seed form to work its magic on the gut. Fennel is rich in potassium and fiber, and its vitamin C content ma makes a great immunity booster. In the garden, I skip all that. Substitutions, stalks, celery, bok choy, onions. For, for leaves, dill, parsley, and cilantro. Keep it fresh. Pairings. For fruits and vegetables, it goes well with asparagus, beets, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, celery, citrus, cucumbers, onions, mushrooms, potatoes, tomatoes, zucchini. For proteins, it goes well with beans, cheese, chicken, duck, eggs, fish, and seafood, lamb, lentils, and pork. And for seasonings or other herbs, it goes well with basil, cardamom, Cayenne, chervil, chives, cinnamon, cloves, coriander seeds, cumin, fenugreek, garlic, ginger, lemon juice, mint, mustard, nigella, oregano, parsley, peppercorns, thyme, and turmeric. In the kitchen, for dishes, it pairs well with salads, or good for salads, sauces, soups, and roasts. And garlic. Garlic flavor profile. Pungent and spicy. Lovingly, lovingly dubbed the stinking rose, garlic is one of the most recognizable flavors in the world. Essential to Mediterranean and Asian cuisines. It's a member of the lily family. Hmm. Along with its similarly pungent relatives, chives, leeks, and onions. Most commonly found in raw bulb form, garlic can be cooked whole or for a, or whole for a sweet and mellow effect or chopped up to release stronger flavors. However, it should be cooked for a very long time because it loses flavor and nutritional value during cooking. It also burns easily, which radically affects the taste. Add, add it at the end of cooking to avoid running or ruining your dish. In addition to fresh garlic, you also find it sold as powder, flakes, granules, paste, juice, and as extract. <coughs> health benefits. Garlic is one of the best herbs for all around health. <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, again, health benefits. Garlic is one of the best herbs for all around health. It helps fight infections caused by bacteria, viruses, and fungi. 
and it's thought to be a powerful weapon against the common cold and flu. It's also well known, a well-known anti-inflammatory, great for people who suffer from chronic inflammatory conditions like Crohn's disease, psoriasis, and arthritis. The stinking rose also offers antioxidant properties which can boost the immune system and postpone or prevent degenerative conditions related to aging. On top of all that, garlic is good for the heart. It can help lower blood pressure and cholesterol and prevent and eliminate plaque buildup in the arteries. All right, in the garden. Substitutions, leeks, onions. All right, keep it fresh, drying and storing garlic. Uh, skip that section. Pairings. For vegetables, it goes good with artichoke, asparagus, avocado, carrots, celery, eggplant, mushrooms, onions, peas, peppers, potatoes, tomatoes, zucchini. For proteins, it goes well with beans, beef, chicken, cheese, eggs, fish, seafood, pork, and sausage. For seasonings and other herbs, it goes well with basil, bay leaves, cayenne, cumin, ginger, honey, lemon juice, oregano, parsley, red pepper flakes, rosemary, soy sauce, thyme, Worcestershire sauce. In the kitchen. For other dishes, it pairs well with salads, soups, sauces, dressings, marinades, stir fries, pastas, pizzas, roasts, and just about anything. Garlic prep slice, chop, mince, crush. Skip that. All right, next is horseradish. The flavor profile is pungent, spicy, zesty, mustard-like. This long beige brown root is a staple in German Austrian, Scandinavian, and French regional cuisines. Traditionally, the root was chopped or sliced, mixed with vinegar, and served as a condiment for roast beef and other rich meats and fish. Mm. The shredded root is now often combined with mayonnaise, sour cream, or yogurt to make zesty sauces and dips. Horseradish should not be cooked as its flavor dissipates quickly and completely when exposed to too much heat. Health benefits. Known for its antibacterial, antiviral, and antifungal properties, horseradish can help treat infections in the respiratory system and urinary tract. Its pungent heat can help kick colds and congestion. Just one whiff or taste clears the sinuses and breaks up mucus. In the garden, substitutions, ginger, mustard, wasabi, keep it fresh, pairings, for fruits and vegetables, it goes well with beets, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, endive, lemon, zest, onions, parsnips, potatoes, tomatoes, turnips. For protein, it goes good with beef, cheeses, chicken, eggs, fish, seafood, ham, and sausages. For seasonings and other herbs, it goes well with cayenne, celery seed, dill, fennel, garlic, lemon juice, mustard, paprika, parsley, and Worcestershire sauce. In the kitchen, for dishes, it pairs well with sauces, dips, dressings, marinades, soups, and salads. All right. Uh, oh, I don't know him. Go for one hour. I don't know, what, what are we at? 59 minutes. So one hour? Well, then, then say that. All right, one more. One more. And next is lavender. Ah, oh, beautiful lavender. The flavor profile is sweet, floral, slightly bitter, subtle citrus and mint. With a calming, lightly floral fragrance, long treasured in perfumes and cosmetics, lavender has been gaining culinary ground over the last half century. In addition to the lovely aromatic aromatics, it adds a beautiful burst of color to any home garden with, brightly, with bright purple or blue purple flowers and a grayish green stems. Lavender is an essential herb in traditional 
Provencal cuisine used in Herbe de, de Provence blends both the flowers and leaves of English lavender can be used in cooking. Leaves can be uh, leaves can substitute for rosemary and savory dishes, while vibrant purple flowers make beautiful garnish for salads and decorate uh, and decoration on cakes, pastries, and in champagne champagne flutes. Health benefits. Lavender has been used over the centuries to soothe headaches, digest, digestive troubles, and inflame skin conditions. Today, lavender oil is used in aromatherapy to relieve symptom, or symptoms of anxiety, including insomnia, depression, irritability, and stress-induced digestive issues. In the garden, substitutions, chamomile, elderflower, hyssop, rose, rosemary. Keep it fresh. Pairings. For fruits and vegetables, it goes well with apples, apricots, berries, cherries, figs, lemon, onions, oranges, peaches, pears, potatoes, plums, rhubarb, and shallots. For protein, it goes well with chicken, cream cheese, eggs, goat, cheese, lamb, mas mascarpone, I don't know, nuts, rabbit, and salmon. For seasoning and herbs, goes well with basil, cinnamon, cloves, fennel, fennel seeds, garlic, ginger, honey, lemon, lemon juice, lemon zest, marjoram, mint, oregano, parsley, pepper, perilla, rose, rosemary, sage, savory, thyme, and vanilla. And in the kitchen, for dishes, it pairs well with salads, roasts, stews, sauces, rice, dressings, and marinades, ice cream, custards, cakes, jams, and teas. All right, stop and break there. Just kind of part one. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next episode, next part. We're in the ales. Next, we're on lemongrass and we're just covering common herbs. So have a way to go. And thanks for watching. Sorry for some, maybe be a little boring. For others, interesting. And again, it's a good over gu overall guide, A to Z, herbs and spices uh, for cuisine, cocktails, and culture. And I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And peace.